fit for a historic third term under his leadership. We are grateful for their support, faith and trust in our policies. We are determined to ensure that all Indians, regardless of religion, caste, gender and age, make substantial progress in realizing their life goals and aspirations. Global context. The global economy, while performing better than expected, is still in the grip of policy uncertainties. Elevated asset prices, political uncertainties, and shipping disruptions continue to pose significant downside risks for growth and upside risks to inflation. In this context, India's economic growth continues to be the shining exception and will remain so in the years ahead. India's inflation continues to be low, stable, and moving towards the 4% target. Co-inflation, that is non-food and non-fuel, currently is 3.1%. Steps are being taken to ensure supplies of perishable goods reach markets adequately. Interim budget. As mentioned in the interim budget, we need to focus on four major casts, namely the Garib, Mahilaye, Yuva, and Anadatta, the poor, women, youth, and the farmer. For Anadatta, we announced higher minimum support prices a month ago for all major crops, delivering on the promise of at least a 50% margin over costs. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana was extended for five years, benefiting more than 80 crore people. Administrative actions for approval and implementation of various schemes announced in the interim budget are well underway. The required allocations have been made. Budget theme. Turning attention to the full year and beyond in this budget, we particularly focus on employment, skilling, MSMEs, and the middle class. I'm happy to announce the Prime Minister's package of five schemes and initiatives to facilitate employment, skilling, and other opportunities for 4.1 crore youth over a five-year period, with a central outlay of 2 lakh crore rupees. I will speak about them shortly, while more details may be seen in the annexure. This year, I have made a provision of 1.48 lakh rupees, 1.48 lakh crore rupees for education, employment, and skilling. Budget priorities. The people have given a unique opportunity to our government to take the country on the path of strong development and an all-round prosperity. In the interim budget, we promise to present a detailed roadmap for our pursuit of Vikasit Bharat. In line with the strategy set out in the interim budget, this budget envisages sustained efforts on the following nine priorities for generating ample opportunities for all. Number one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Number two, employment and skilling. Number three, inclusive human resource development and social justice. Four, manufacturing and services. Five, urban development. Six, energy security. Seven, infrastructure. Eight, 
innovation, research and development, and nine, next generation reforms. Subsequent budgets will build on these and add more priorities and actions. A more detailed formulation will be carried out as part of the economic policy framework about which I will speak later in this speech. This budget details some of the specific actions to be initiated in the current year towards fulfillment of these priorities with potential for transformative changes. The budget also covers some of the previously made announcements with intent to strengthen them and step up their implementation for expediting our journey towards the goal of Vikasid Bharat. Priority one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Transforming agricultural research. Our government will undertake a comprehensive review of the research, agricultural research setup to bring the focus on raising productivity and developing climate resilient varieties. Funding will be provided in challenge mode, including to the private sector. Domain experts, both from the government and outside, will oversee the conduct of such research. Release of new varieties. New 109 high yielding and climate resilient varieties of 32 field and horticultural crops will be released for cultivation by farmers. Natural farming. In the next two years, one crore farmers across the country will be initiated into natural farming, supported by certification and branding. Implementation will be through scientific institutions and willing gram panchayats. 10,000 need-based bio-input resource centers will be established. Missions for pulses and oil seeds. For achieving self-sufficiency in pulses and oil seeds, we will strengthen their production, storage, and marketing. As announced in the interim budget, a strategy is being put in place to achieve Atmanirbharta for oil seeds such as mustard, groundnut, sesame, soybean, and sunflower. Vegetable production and supply chains. Large-scale clusters for vegetable production will be developed closer to major consumption centers. We will promote farmer-producer organizations cooperatives, and startups for vegetable supply chains, including for collection and storage and marketing. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture. Buoyed by the success of the pilot project, our government, in partnership with the states, will facilitate the implementation of the digital public infrastructure in agriculture for coverage of farmers and their lands in three years. During this year, digital crop survey for Karif using the DPI will be taken up in 400 districts. The details of six crore farmers and their lands will be brought into the farmer and land registries. Further, the issuance of Jan Samarth based Kisan credit cards will be enabled in five states. Shrimp production and export. Financial support for setting up a network of nucleus breeding centers for shrimp brood stocks will be provided. Financing for shrimp farming, processing and export will be facilitated through NABARD. National cooperation policy. Our government will bring out a national cooperation policy for systematic, orderly, and all round de development of the cooperative sector. Fast tracking growth of rural economy, 
and generation of employment opportunities on a large scale will be the policy goal. This year, I have made a provision of 1.52 lakh crore rupees for agriculture and allied sectors. Priority two, employment and skilling. Employment linked incentive. Our government will implement following three schemes for employment linked incentive as part of the Prime Minister's package. These will be based on enrollment in the EPFO and focus on recognition of first time employees and support to employees and employers. Scheme A, first timers. This scheme will provide one month wage to all persons newly entering the workforce in all formal sectors. Direct benefit transfer of one month salary in three installments to first time employees as registered in the EPFO will be up to 15,000 rupees. The eligibility limit will be a salary of 1 lakh per month. The scheme is expected to benefit 210 lakh youths. Scheme B, job creation in manufacturing. This scheme will incentivize additional employment in the manufacturing sector linked to the employment of first-time employees. An incentive will be provided at specified scale directly both to the employee and the employer with respect to the EPFO contribution in the first four years of employment. The scheme is expected to benefit 30 lakh youth entering employment and their employers. Scheme C, support to employers. This employer-focused scheme will cover additional employment in all sectors. All additional employment within a salary of one lakh rupee per month will be counted. The government will reimburse to employers up to 3,000 rupees per month for two years towards the EPFO contribution for each additional employee. The scheme is expected to incentivize additional employment of 50 lakh persons. Participation of women in the workforce. We will facilitate higher participation of women in the workforce through setting up of working women hostels in collaboration with industry and establishing creches. In addition, the partnership will seek to organize women-specific skilling programs and promotion of market access for women SHG enterprises. Skilling program. I'm happy to announce a new centrally sponsored scheme as the fourth scheme under the Prime Minister's package for skilling and collaboration with state governments and industry. 20 lakh youth will be skilled over a five-year period. One thousand industrial training institutes will be upgraded in hub and spoke arrangements with outcome orientation. Course content and design will be aligned to the skill needs of industry and new courses will be introduced for emerging needs. Skilling loans. The model skill loan scheme will be revised to facilitate loans up to 7.5 lakh rupees with a guarantee from a government promoted fund. This measure is expected to help 25,000 students every year.
Education loans for helping our youth who have not been eligible for any benefit under government schemes and policies, I am happy to announce a financial support for loans up to 10 lakh rupees for higher education in domestic institutions. E-vouchers for this purpose E vouchers for this purpose will be given directly to 1 lakh students every year for annual interest subvention of 3% of the loan amount. Priority 3 Inclusive human resource development and social justice. Saturation approach. Our government is committed to all round, all pervasive and all-inclusive development of people, particularly farmers, youth, women, and the poor. For achieving social justice comprehensively, the saturation approach of covering all eligible people through various programs, including those for education and health, will be adopted to empower them by improving their capabilities. Implementation of schemes meant for supporting economic activities by craftsmen, artisans, self-help groups, scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, and women entrepreneurs and street vendors such as the PM Vishwakarma, PM Swanidhi, National Livelihood Missions, and Stand Up India will be stepped up. Purvodhya, the states in the eastern part of the country are rich in endowments and have strong cultural traditions. We will formulate a plan, Purvodhya, for, all round, for the all-round development of the eastern region of the country, covering Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Odisha, and Andhra Pradesh. This will cover human resource development, infrastructure, and generation of economic opportunities to make the region an engine to attain Vikasit Bharat. On the Amritsar Kolkata Industrial Corridor, we will support development of an industrial node at Gaya. This corridor will catalyze industrial development of the eastern region. The industrial node at Gaya will also be a good model for developing our ancient centers of cultural importance into future centers of modern economy. This model shall showcase Vikas B, Virasat B in a growth trajectory. We will also support development of road connectivity projects, namely one. Patna Purnia Expressway, 2. Baksar Bagalpur Expressway, 3. Bodhgaya, Rajgir, Vaishali, and Darbanga Spurs, and 4. Additional two lane bridge over River Ganga at Baksar at a total cost of 26,000 crore rupees. Power projects, including setting up of a new 2,400 megawatt power plant at Pir Painti, will be taken up at a cost of 21,400 crore rupees. New airports, medical colleges, and sports infrastructure in Bihar will be constructed. Additional allocation to support capital investments will be provided. The requests of Bihar government for external assistance from multilateral development banks will be expedited. Andhra Pradesh.
Pradesh Reorganization Act. Our government has made concerted efforts to fulfill the commitments in Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act. Reorg recognizing, recognizing the state's need for the capital, recognizing us recognizing the state's need for a capital we will facilitate fi special financial support through multilateral development agencies in the current financial year 15000 crore rupees will be arranged with additional amounts in future years is fully committed to financing and yes. early completion of the Polavaram Bede irrigation Bede project, Bede. which is the lifeline, which is the lifeline for Andhra Pradesh and its farmers. This will facilitate our country's food security as well. Under the Act, under the Act, Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act for promoting industrial development, funds will be provided for essential infrastructure such as water, power, railways and roads in Koparthi Node on the Vishagapatnam Chennai Industrial Corridor and Varavakal Node on the Hyderabad Bangalore Industrial Corridor. An additional allocation will be provided this year towards capital investment for economic growth. Grants for backward regions of Rayalaseema, Prakasham, North Coastal Andhra, as stated in the Act, will be provided. PM Awas Yojana. Three crore additional houses under the PM Avas Yojana in rural and urban areas in the country will have been announced for which the necessary allocations are being made. Women-led development. For promoting women-led development, the budget carries an allocation of more than three lakh crore for schemes benefiting women and girls. The signals, this signals our government's commitment for enhancing women's role in economic development. Pradhan Mantri Janjatiya Unnat Gram Abhiyan For improving the socio-economic condition of tribal communities, we will launch the Pradhan Mantri Janjatiya Unnat Gram Abhiyan by adopting saturation coverage for tribal families in tribal majority villages and aspirational districts. This will cover 63,000 villages benefiting 5 crore tribal people. Bank branches in northeastern region. More than 100 branches of India Post Payment Bank will be set up in the Northeast region to expand the banking services. This year, I have made a provision of 2.66 lakh crore rupees for rural development, including rural infrastructure. Priority four, manufacturing and services, support for promotion of MSMEs. This budget, provide special attention to MSMEs and manufacturing, particularly labor-intensive manufacturing. We have formulated a package covering financing, regulatory changes, and technology support for MSMEs to help them grow and also compete globally, as mentioned in the interim budget. I'm happy to announce the following specific measures. Credit guarantee scheme for MSMEs in the manufacturing sector. For facilitating term loans to MSMEs for purchase of machinery 
and equipment without collateral or third party guarantee, a credit guarantee scheme will be introduced. The scheme will operate on pooling of credit risks of such MSMEs. A separately constituted self-financing guarantee fund will provide to each applicant guarantee cover up to 100 crore rupees, while the loan amount may be larger. The borrower will have to provide an upfront guarantee fee and an annual guarantee fee on the reducing loan balance. New assessment model for MSME credit. Public sector banks will build their own in-house capability to assess MSMEs for credit instead of relying on external assessment. They will also take a lead in developing or getting developed a new credit assessment model based on the scoring of digital footprints of the MSMEs in the economy. This is expected to be a significant improvement over the traditional assessment of credit eligibility based only on asset or turnover criteria. That will also cover MSMEs without a formal accounting system. Credit support to MSMEs during stress period. I'm happy to announce a new mechanism for facilitating continuation of bank credit to MSMEs during their stress period. While being in special mention account, SMA account, SMA stage, for reasons beyond their control, MSMEs need credit to continue their business and to avoid getting into the NPA stage. Credit availability will be supported through a guarantee from a government promoted fund. Mudra loans. The limit of mudra loans will be enhanced to 20 lakh from the current 10 lakh for those entrepreneurs who have availed and successfully repaid previous loans under the Tarun category. Enhanced scope for mandatory onboarding in treads. For facilitating MSMEs to unlock their working capital by converting their trade receivables into cash, I propose to reduce the turnover threshold of buyers for mandatory onboarding on the treads platform from rupees 500 crore to 250 crore rupees. This measure will bring 22 more CPSCs and 7,000 more companies onto the platform. Medium enterprises will also be included in the scope of the suppliers. SIDBI branches in MSME clusters. SIDBI will open new branches to expand its reach to serve all major MSME clusters within three years and provide direct credit to them. With the opening of 24 such branches this year, the service coverage will expand to 168 out of 242 major clusters. MSME units for food irradiation, quality and safety testing. Financial support for setting up of 50 multi-product food irradiation units in the MSME sector will be provided. Setting up of 100 food quality and safety testing labs with NABL accreditation will be facilitated. E-commerce export hubs. To enable MSMEs and traditional artisans to sell their products in international markets, e-commerce export hubs will be set up in public-private partnership mode. These hubs under a seamless regulatory and logistic framework will facilitate trade and export related services under one roof. Measures for promotion of manufacturing and services, internship in top companies. As the fifth scheme under Prime Minister's package, our government will launch a comprehensive scheme for providing internship 
internship opportunities in 500 top companies to 1 crore youth in 5 years, they will gain They will gain exposure for 12 months to real-life business environment, varied professions and employment opportunities. An internship allowance of 5,000 per month, 5,000 rupees per month, along with a one-time assistance of 6,000 rupees will be provided. Companies will be expected to bear the training cost and 10% of their internship cost from their CSR funds. Industrial parks. Our government will facilitate development of investment-ready, plug-and-play industrial parks with complete infrastructure in or near 100 cities in partnership with the states and private sector by better using town planning schemes. 12 industrial parks under the National Industrial Corridor Development Program also will be sanctioned. No, Rental housing, rental housing with dormitory type accommodation for industrial workers will be just one minute. Rental housing, I repeat, rental housing with dormitory type accommodation for industrial workers will be facilitated in PPP mode with VGF support and commitment from anchor industries. Shipping industry. Ownership, leasing, and flagging reforms will be implemented to improve the share of Indian shipping industry and generate more employment. Critical mineral mission. We will set up a critical mineral machine, mission for domestic production, recycling of critical minerals, and overseas acquisition of critical mineral assets. Its mandate will include technology development, skilled workforce, extended producer responsibility, uh, extended producer responsibility framework, and a suitable financing mechanism. Offshore mining of minerals. Our government will launch the auction of the first tranche of offshore blocks for mining, building on the exploration already carried out. Digital public infrastructure applications. Turning to the services sector, I propose development of DPI applications at population scale for productivity gains, business opportunities, and innovation by the private sector. These are planned in the areas of credit, e-commerce, education, health, law and justice, logistics, MSME service delivery, and urban governance. Integrated technology platform for IBC ecosystem. An integrated technology platform will be set up for improving the outcomes under the Insolvency Bankruptcy Code for achieving consistency, transparency, timely processing, and better oversight for all stakeholders. Voluntary closure of LLPs. The services of the Center for Processing Accelerated Corporate Exit C PACE will be extended for voluntary closure of LLPs to reduce the closure times. National Company Law Tribunals. The IBC has resolved more than 1,000 companies, resulting in direct recovery of 3.3 lakh crore to creditors. 3.3 lakh crore rupees to creditors. In addition, 28,000 cases involving over 10 lakh crore rupees have been disposed of even prior to admission. Appropriate changes to the IBC, reforms and strengthening of the tribunal and appellate tribunals will be initiated 
to speed up insolvency resolution, additional tribunals will be established. Out of those, some will be notified to decide cases exclusively under the Companies Act. Debt recovery. Steps for reforming and strengthening debt recovery tribunals will be taken. Additional tribunals will be established to speed up recovery. Priority five, urban development. Cities as growth hubs. Working with states, our government will facilitate development of cities as growth hubs. This will be achieved through economic and transit planning and orderly development of peri-urban areas utilizing town planning schemes. Creative redevelopment of cities. For creative brownfield redevelopment of existing cities with a transformative impact, our government will formulate a framework for enabling policies, market-based mechanisms, and regulation. Transit-oriented development. Transit-oriented development plans for 14 large cities with a population above 30 lakh will be formulated along with an implementation and financing strategy. Urban housing. Under the PM Avas Yojana, Urban 2.0, housing needs of one crore urban poor and middle class families will be addressed with an investment of 10 lakh crore rupees. This will include the central assistance of 2.2 lakh crore rupees in the next five years. A provision of interest subsidy to facilitate loans at affordable rates is also envisaged. In addition, enabling policies and regulations for efficient and transparent rental housing, transparent rental housing markets with enhanced availability will also be put in place. Water supply and sanitation. In partnership with state uh, governments and multilateral development banks, we will promote water supply, sewage treatments, and solid waste management projects and services for 100 large cities through bankable projects. These projects will also envisage uses, use of treated water for irrigation and filling up of tanks in nearby areas. Street markets. Building on the success of PM Swanadi, PM Swanadi scheme in transforming the lives of street vendors our government envisions a scheme to support each year over the next five years the development of 100 weekly huts or street food hubs in select cities. Stamp duty. We will encourage states which continue to charge high stamp duty to moderate the rates for all. And, all, and also consider further lowering duties for properties purchased by women. This reform will be made an essential component of urban development schemes. Priority six, energy security, energy transition. In the interim budget, I had announced our strategy to sustain high and more resource efficient economic growth along with the energy security in terms of availability, accessibility, and affordability. We will bring out a policy document on appropriate energy transition pathways that balances the imperatives of employment, growth, and environmental sustainability. PM Surya Gar Muft Bijli Yojana. PM Surya Gar Muft Bijli Yojana. In line with the announcement in the interim budget, in line with the announcement in the interim budget, PM Surya Gar Muft Bijli Yojana has been launched to install rooftop solar plants to enable to enable one crore households obtain free electricity up to 300 units every month. 
The scheme has generated remarkable response with more than 1.28 crore registrations and 14 lakh applications and we will further encourage it. Pumped storage policy. A policy for promoting pumped storage projects will be brought out for electricity storage and facilitating smooth integration of the growing share of renewable energy with its variable and intermittent nature in the overall energy mix. Research and development of small and modular nuclear reactors. Nuclear energy is expected to form a very significant part of the energy mix for Vikasit Bharat. Towards that pursuit, our government will partner with the private sector for one, setting up Bharat small reactors, two, research and development of Bharat small modular reactor, and three, research and development of new, newer technologies for nuclear energy. The R&D funding announced in the interim budget will be made available for this sector also. Advanced, Alba sup advanced ultra supercritical thermal power plants. The development of indigenous technology for advanced ultra supercritical thermal power plants with much higher efficiency has been completed. A joint venture between NTPC and BHEL will set up a full-scale 800 megawatt commercial plant using AUSC technology. The government will provide the required fiscal support. Moving forward, development of indigenous capacity for the production of high-grade steel and other advanced metallurgy materials for these plants will result in strong spin-off benefits for the economy. Roadmap for hard to abate industries. A roadmap for moving the hard to abate industries from energy efficiency targets to emission targets will be formulated. Appropriate regulations for transition of these industries from the current perform, achieve, and trade mode to Indian carbon market mode will be put in place. Support to traditional micro and small industries. An investment grade energy audit of traditional micro and small industries in 60 clusters, including brass and ceramic, will be facilitated. Financial support will be provided for shifting them to cleaner forms of energy and implementation of energy efficiency measures. The scheme will be replicated in another 100 clusters in the next phase. Priority seven, infrastructure investment by central government. Significant investment the central government has made over the years in building and improving infrastructure has had a strong multiplier effect on the economy. We will endeavor to maintain strong fiscal support for infrastructure over the next five years in conjunction with imperatives of other priorities and fiscal consolidation. This year, I have provided 11 lakh 11,111 crore rupees for capital expenditure. This would be 3.4% of our GDP. Infrastructure investment by state governments. We will encourage states to provide support of similar scale for infrastructure subject to their development priorities a provision of 1.5 lakh crore rupees for long-term interest-free loans have been made this year also to support the states in their resource allocation. Private investment in infrastructure. Investment in infrastructure by private sector will be promoted through viability gap funding and enabling policies and regulations. 
a market-based financing framework will be brought out. Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, phase four of the PMGSY will be launched to provide all weather connectivity to 25,000 rural habitations which have become eligible in view of their population increase. Irrigation and flood mitigation. Bihar has frequently suffered from floods, many of them originating outside the country. Plans to build flood control structures in Nepal are yet to progress. Our government, through the accelerated irrigation benefit program and other sources, will provide financial support for projects with estimated cost of 11,500 crore rupees, such as the Kosi Nichi Intrastate Link and 20 other ongoing and new schemes including barrages, river pollution abatement, and irrigation projects. In addition, survey and investigation of COSI-related flood mitigation and irrigation projects will be undertaken. Assam, Assam grapples with floods every year by the Brahmaputra River and its tributaries originating outside India. We will provide assistance to Assam for flood management and, and related projects. Himachal Pradesh suffered extensive losses due to floods last year. Our government will provide assistance to the state for reconstruction and rehabilitation through multilateral development assistance. <laughs> Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand too, suffered losses due to cloud bursts and massive landslides. We will provide assistance to the state. Recently, Sikkim witnessed devastating flash floods and landslides that wreaked havoc across the state. Our government will provide assistance to the state. Tourism. Tourism has always been. Will also create jobs, stimulate investments, and unlock economic opportunities for other sectors, in addition to the measures outlined in the interim budget, I propose the following measures. Vishnupad Temple at Gaya and Mahabodhi Temple at Bodh Gaya in Bihar are of immense spiritual significance. Comprehensive development of Vishnupad Temple Corridor and Mahabodhi Temple Corridor will be supported, modeled on the successful Kashi Vishwanath Temple Corridor to transform them into world-class pilgrim and tourist destinations. Rajgir. Rajgir holds immense religious significance for Hindus, Buddhists and Jains. The 20th Tirthankara Munisuvarata temple in the Jain complex, Jain temple complex is ancient. The Saptarishi or the seven hot springs form a warm water Brahmkund that is sacred. A comprehensive development initiative for Rajgir will be undertaken. Our government will support the development of Nananda as a tourist center besides reviving Nalanda University to its glorious stature. Odisha's scenic beauty, Odisha's scenic beauty, temples, monuments, craftsmanship, wild, wildlife sanctuaries, 
natural landscapes and pristine beaches make it an ultimate tourism destination, our government will provide assistance for their development to Odisha as well. Priority eight, innovation, research, and development. We will oper operationalize the Anusandan National Research Fund for basic research and prototype development. Further, we will set up a mechanism for spurring private sector-driven research and innovation at commercial scale with a financing pool of 1 lakh crore rupees in line with the announcement in the interim budget. Space economy, with our continued emphasis on expanding the space economy by five times in the next 10 years, a venture capital fund of 1,000 crore rupees will be set up. Priority nine, next generation reforms. Economic policy framework. We will formulate an economic policy framework to delineate the overarching approach to economic development and set the scope of the next generation of reforms for facilitating employment opportunities and sustaining high growth. Our government will initiate and incentivize reforms for one, improving productivity of factors of production, and two, facilitating markets and sectors to become more efficient. These reforms will cover all factors of production, namely land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, and technology as an enabler of improving total factor productivity and bridging inequality. Effective implementation of several of these reforms requires collaboration between the center and the states and building consensus as development of the country lies in development of the states. For promoting competitive federalism and incentivizing states for faster implementation of reforms, I propose to earmark a significant part of the 50-year interest-free loan Working with the states, we will initiate the following reforms. Land-related reforms and actions, both in the rural and urban areas, will cover land administration, will cover one, land administration, planning and management, and two, urban planning usage and building bylaws. These will be incentivized for completion within the next three years through appropriate fiscal support. Rural land-related actions. Rural land-related actions will include, one, assignment of unique land parcel identification number, UL PIN, or GU Aadhaar for all lands. Two, digitization of cadastral maps. Three, survey of subdivisions, survey of map sub subdivisions as per current ownership. Four, establishment of land registry. And five, linking to the farmer's registry. These actions will also facilitate credit flow and other agricultural services. Urban land related actions. Land records in urban areas will be digitized with GIS mapping, an IT-based system for property record administration, updating, and tax administration will be established. These will also facilitate improving the financial position of urban local bodies. Labor-related reforms, services to labor. Our government will facilitate the provision of a wide array of services to labor including those for employment and skilling. A comprehensive integration of eShrum portal with other portals will facilitate such one-stop solution. Open architecture databases for the rapidly changing labor market, skill requirements, and available job roles, and a mechanism to connect job aspirants with potential employers and skill providers will be covered in these services.
श्रम सुविधा एंड समाधान पोर्टल श्रम सुविधा एंड समाधान पोर्टल विल बी रीबैंड टू एनहेंस ईज ऑफ कंप्लायंस फॉर इंडस्ट्री एंड ट्रेड capital and entrepreneurship related reforms financial sector vision and strategy for meeting financing financing needs of the economy our government will bring out a financial sector vision and strategy document to prepare the sector in terms of size capacity and skills this will set the agenda for the next 5 years and guide the work of the government regulators financial institutions and market participants taxonomy for climate finance we will develop taxonomy for climate finance for enhancing the availability of capital for climate adaptation and mitigation this will support achievement of the country's climate commitments and green transition variable variable capital company structure we will seek the required legislative approval for providing an efficient and flexible mode for financing leasing of aircrafts and ships and pooled funds of private equity through a variable company structure foreign direct investments and overseas investment the rules and regulations for foreign direct investment and overseas investments will be simplified to one facilitate foreign direct investments two nudge prioritization and three promote opportunities for using indian rupee as a currency for overseas investment nps vatsalya nps vatsalya a plan for contribution by parents and guardians for minors will be started on attaining the age of majority Uh, the plan can be converted seamlessly into a normal nps account use of technology we have successfully used technology for improving productivity and bridging inequality in our economy during the past 10 years public investment in digital infrastructure and innovations by the private sector have helped in improving access of all citizens particularly the common people to market resources education health and services we will step up adoption of technology towards digital digitalization of the economy ease of doing business for enhancing ease of doing business we are already working on the jan vishwas bill 2.0 further states will be incentivized for implementation of the business reforms action plans and digitize digitalization data and statistics for improving data governance collection processing and management of data and statistics different sectoral databases including those established under the digital india mission will be utilized with active use of technology tools new pension scheme the committee to review the nps has made considerable progress in its work i am happy to i am happy i am happy that the staff side of national council of the joint consultative machinery for central government employees has taken a constructive approach a solution will be evolved which addresses the relevant issues while maintaining fiscal prudence to protect the common citizens budget estimates for 2425 for the year 2425 total receipts other than borrowings and the total expenditure are estimated at 32.07 lakh crore rupees and 48.21 lakh crore rupees respectively the net tax receipts are estimated at 25.83 lakh crore rupees the fiscal deficit is estimated at 4.9% of the gdp the gross and the net market borrowings through dated securities during 24 25 
are estimated at 14.01 lakh crore rupees and 11.63 lakh crore rupees respectively. Both will be less than that in 23-24. The fiscal consolidation path announced by me in 2021 has served our economy very well, and we aim to reach the deficit below 4.5% next year. The government is committed to staying the course. From 2026-27 onwards, our endeavour will be to keep the fiscal deficit each year such that the central government's debt will be on a declining path as percentage of GDP. I will now move to Part B. Indirect taxes. Sir, I start with GST. It has decreased tax incidence on the common man, reduced compliance burden and logistics cost for trade and industry, and enhanced revenues of the central and the state governments. It is a success of vast proportions. To multiply the benefits of GST, we will strive to further simplify and rationalize the tax structure and endeavor to expand it to the remaining sectors. My proposals for custom duties, my proposals for customs duties intend to support domestic manufacturing, deepen local value addition, promote export competitiveness, and simplify taxation while keeping the interest of the general public and consumers surmount. In Budget 22-23, we reduce the number of customs duty rates. I propose to undertake a comprehensive review of the rate structure over the next six months to rationalize and simplify it for ease of trade, removal of duty inversion, and reduction of disputes. I shall now take up sector-specific customs duty proposals. Medicine and medical equipments to provide relief to cancer patients. I propose to fully exempt three more medicines from customs duties. I also propose changes in the BCD on X-ray tubes and flat panel detectors for use in medical X-ray machines under the phased manufacturing program so as to synchronize them with the domestic capacity addition. Mobile phone and related parts. With a threefold increase in domestic production and almost a hundredfold jump in exports of mobile phones over the last six years, the Indian mobile industry has matured. In the interest of consumers, I now propose to reduce the BCD on mobile phone mobile PCBA, and mobile charger to 15%. Critical minerals. Minerals such as lithium, copper, cobalt, and rare earth elements are critical for sectors like nuclear energy, renewable energy, space, defense, telecommunications, and high-tech electronics. I propose to fully exempt customs duties on 25 critical minerals and reduce BCD on two of them. This will provide a major fillip to the processing and refining of such minerals and help secure their availability for these strategic and important sectors. Solar energy. Energy transition is critical in the fight against climate change. To support energy transition, I propose to expand the list of exempted capital goods for use in the manufacture of solar cells and panels in the country. Further, in view of sufficient domestic manufacturing capacity of solar gas, glass, and tinned copper interconnect, I propose not to extend the exemption of custom duties provided to them. Marine products. India's seafood exports in the last financial year touched an all-time high of more than 
60,000 crores of rupees. Frozen shrimp accounted for about two-thirds of these exports. To enhance their comp competitiveness, I propose to reduce BCD on certain broodstock, polycate worms, shrimp, and fish feed to 5%. I also propose to exempt customs duty on various inputs for manufacture of shrimp and fish feed, leather and textile. Similarly, to enhance the competitiveness of exports in the leather and textile sectors, I propose to reduce BCD on real down filling material from duck or goose. I am also making additions to the list of exempted goods for manufacture of leather and textile garments, footwear, and other leather articles for export. To rectify inversion in duty, I propose to reduce BCD subject to conditions on methylene diphenyl di isocyanate MDI for manufacture of spandex yarn from 7.5 to 5 percent. Furthermore, the export duty structure on raw hides, skin, and leather is proposed to be simplified and rationalized. Precious metals. To enhance domestic value addition in gold and precious metal jewelry in the country, I propose to reduce customs duties on gold and silver to 6% and that of platinum to 6.4%. Other metals. Steel and copper are important raw materials. To reduce their cost of production, I propose to remove the BCD on ferro-nickel and blister copper. I am also continuing with nil BCD on ferrous scrap and nickel cathode and concessional BCD of 2.5% on copper scrap. Electronics. To increase value addition in the domestic electronics industry, I propose to remove the BCD subject to conditions on oxygen-free copper for manufacture of resistors. I also propose to exempt certain parts for manufacture of connectors. Chemicals and petrochemicals. To support existing and new capacities in the pipeline, I propose to increase the BCD on ammonium nitrate from 7.5% to 10%. Plastics, PVC flex banners are bio, non-biodegradable and hazardous for environment and health. To curb their imports, I propose to raise the BCD on them from 10 to 25 percent. Telecommunication equipment, to incentivize domestic manufacturing, I propose to increase the BCD from 10 to 15 percent on PCBA of specific specified telecom equipment. Trade facilitation. To promote domestic aviation and boat and ship MRO, I propose to extend the period, of ex period for export of goods imported for repairs from six months to one year. I'll read that again. To promote domestic aviation and boat and ship maintenance, repair, and operations. I propose to extend the period for export of goods imported for repairs from six months to one year. In the same vein, I propose to extend the time limit for re-import of goods for repairs under warranty from three to five years. I now move to direct taxes. We will continue our efforts to simplify taxes, taxes, improve taxpayer services, provide tax certainty, and reduce litigation while enhancing revenues for funding the development and welfare schemes of the government. It, is, it has been our endeavor to simplify taxation. We have taken a number of measures in the last few years, including introduction of simplified tax regimes without exemptions and deductions for corporate tax and for personal income tax. This has been appreciated by taxpayers. 58% of corporate tax came from the simplified tax regime. 
in the financial year 22-23. Similarly, as per data available till now, for the last fiscal, more than two-thirds have availed the new personal income tax regime. Comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act. I am now announcing a comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act 1961. The purpose is to make the Act concise, lucid, easy to read and understand. This will reduce disputes and litigation, thereby providing tax certainty to the taxpayers. I will also bring down the demand embroiled in litigation. It is proposed to be completed in six months. A beginning is being made in the Finance Bill by simplifying the tax regime for charities, tedious rate structures, provisions of reassessment and search provisions, and capital gains taxation. Simplification for charities and tedious. Two tax exemption regimes. The two tax exemption regimes for charities are proposed to be merged into one. The 5% TDS rate on many payments is being merged into the 2% TDS rate and the 20% TDS rate on repurchase of units by mutual funds or UTI is being withdrawn. TDS rate on e-commerce operators is proposed to be reduced from 1 to 0.1%. Moreover, credit of TCS is proposed to be given in the TDS to be deducted on salary. Further, I propose to decriminalize delay for payment of TDS up to the due date of filing statement for the same. I also plan to provide a standard operating procedure for tedious defaults and simplify and rationalize the compounding guidelines for such defaults. Simplification of reassessment. I propose to thoroughly simplify the provisions for reopening and reassessment. An assessment hereinafter can be reopened beyond three years from the end of the assessment year only if the escaped income is 50 lakh rupees or more up to a maximum period of five years from the end of the assessment year. Even in search cases, a time limit of six years before the year of the search as against the existing time limit of 10 years is being proposed. This will reduce tax uncertainty and disputes. Simplification and rationalization of capital gains. Capital gains taxation is also proposed to be hugely simplified. Short-term gains on certain financial assets shall henceforth attract a tax rate of 20%, while that on all other financial assets and all non-financial assets shall continue to attract the applicable tax rate. Long-term gains on all financial and non-financial assets, on the other hand, will attract a tax rate of 12.5%. For the benefit of the lower and the middle income classes, I propose, the, I propose to increase the limit of exemption of capital gains on certain financial assets to 1.25 lakh rupees per year. Listed financial assets held for more than a year will be classified as long-term, while unlisted financial assets and all non-financial assets will have to be held for at least two years to be classified as long-term. Unlisted bonds and debentures, debt mutual funds, and market-linked debentures irrespective of holding period, however, will attract tax on capital gains at applicable rates. Taxpayer services. All the major taxpayer services under GST and most services under customs and income tax have been digitalized. All remaining services of customs and income tax, including rectification 
and order giving effect to appellate orders shall be digitalized and made paperless over the next two years. Litigation and appeals, while our concerted efforts to reduce pendency of appeals at various appellate fora are beginning to show good results, it will continue to engage our highest attention. To dispose of the backlog of first appeals, I plan to deploy more officers to hear and decide such appeals, especially those with large tax effect. For resolution of certain income tax disputes pending an appeal, I am also proposing Vivad Se Vishwa Scheme 2024. Further, I propose to increase monetary limits for filing appeals related to direct taxes, excise and service tax in the tax tribunals, high courts and Supreme Court to 60 lakh rupees, 2 crore rupees and 5 crore respectively. With a view to reduce litigation and provide certainty in international taxation, we will expand the scope of safe harbour ru rules and make them more attractive. We will also streamline the transfer pricing assessment procedure. Employment and investment. I have a few proposals to promote investment and foster employment. First of all, to bolster the Indian startup ecosystem, boost the entrepreneurial spirit, and to support innovation. I propose to abolish the so-called angel tax for all classes of investors. Second, there is tremendous potential for cruise tourism in India. To give a fillip to this employment generating industry, I am proposing a simpler tax regime for foreign shipping companies operating domestic cruises in the country. Third, India is a world leader in the diamond cutting and polishing industry, which employs a large number of skilled workers. To further promote the development of this sector, we would provide for safe harbor rates for foreign mining companies selling raw diamonds in the country. Fourth, to attract foreign capital for our development needs, I propose to reduce the tax rate on foreign companies from 40 to 35 percent. Deepening the tax base. I have a couple of proposals for deepening the tax base. First, security transaction tax on futures and options of securities is proposed to be increased to 0.02 percent and 0.1 percent respectively. Second, for reasons of equity, I propose to tax income received on buyback of shares in the hands of recipients. Other proposals. To improve social security benefits, deduction of expenditure by employers towards NPS is proposed to be increased from 10 to 14 percent of the employee's salary. Similarly, deduction of this expenditure up to 14 percent of salary from the income of employees in private sector, public sector banks and undertakings opting for the new tax regime is proposed to be provided. Indian professionals working in multinationals get ESOPs and invest in social security schemes and other movable assets abroad. Non-reporting of such small foreign assets has penal consequences under the Black Money Act. Such non-reporting of movable assets up to 20 lakh rupees is proposed to be depenalized. Other major proposals in the finance bill relate to withdrawal of equalization levy of 2%, expansion of tax benefits to certain funds and entities in IFSCs, and immunity from penalty and prosecution to Benamidar on full and true disclosure so as to improve conviction under the Benami transaction 
Prohibition Act 1988, personal income tax. Coming to personal income tax rates, I have two announcements to make for those opting for the new tax regime. First, the standard deduction for salaried employees is proposed to be increased from 50,000 to 75,000 rupees. Similarly, deduction on family pension for pensioners is proposed to be enhanced from 15,000 to 25,000 rupees. This will provide relief to about 4 crore salaried individuals and pensioners. Second, in the new tax regime, the tax rate structure is proposed to be revised as follows. 0 to 3 lakh rupees, nil. 3 to 7 lakh rupees, 5%. 7 to 10 lakh rupees, 10%. 10 to 12 lakh rupees, 15%. 12 to 15 lakh rupees, 20%. And above 15 lakh rupees, 30%. As a result of these changes, a salaried employee in the new tax regime stands to save up to 17,500 rupees in income tax. Apart from these, I am also making some ch other changes as given in the annexure. As a result of these proposals, review of about 30 revenue of about 37,000 crore, that is 29,000 crore in direct taxes and 8,000 crore in indirect taxes will be foregone, while revenue of about 30,000 crore rupees will be additionally mobilized. Thus, the total revenue foregone is about 7,000 crores annually. Mr. Speaker, sir, with this, I commend the budget to this August House. Jai Hind. Item number two. Item number two. Two. Sir, with your permission. I rise to lay on the table the following statements under Section 3 of the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management, FRBM Act 2003, Medium Term Fiscal Policy Come Fiscal Policy Strategy Statement, and Macroeconomic Framework Statement. Item number three. Sir, with your permission, I rise to move for leave to introduce the Finance Number two bill 2024. Prashni Eki Videko Pura Stapit Karneki and Mati Pradhan Kijai. Jo Sadash is Ki Pakshma Hake. Jo Sadash Road Menake. Mere Vicharman Ninde Havaloke Pakshwa. Havaloke Pakshwa. And Mati Pradhan Kijati. Mani Mantiji. A Videk Pura Stapit Karen. Sir, I introduce the bill. Item number four. The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir budget. Sir, I rise to present a statement, Hindi and English versions, of the estimated receipts and expenditure of the Union Territory of Jammu Kashmir for the year 24-25. Sabha ki karwai kal budhwar dinak 24 July 2024 ko prapt 11 baje tak ke liye istigit ki jati hai.